Welcome back everyone, Dr. Naveen here from UPSC Medico. So whenever you are starting preparing for this UPSC related examinations, one of the key element or dictum thing that you need to follow is understanding syllabus in detail. Because this exam, UPSC exam is purely syllabus centric, right? And also previous year question centric exam. Right, with regards to syllabus, coming back to our medical sciences as optional, you need to analyze the syllabus in detail and also you have to look at the previous year questions based on that we usually learn the previous year topics right so this is the best way to follow for any UPSC related exam now understanding syllabus we have a separate video in detail okay and also focus guide free focus guide is available in the website you can download it what is the need for this particular video if you look at anatomy there is one confusing thing okay in the anatomy there are some questions based on grass anatomy. There are some questions recently in the exam, final exam, there was a question on surgical anatomy. Some topics are covered under applied anatomy and some topics under clinical anatomy. If you observe the syllabus also, if you can see here, you have grass anatomy of tongue, thyroid, mammary gland, stomach, liver, prostate, gonads and uterus. Okay. You have applied anatomy of diaphragm, perineum and inguinal region and you have clinical anatomy of kidney, urinary bladder, uterine tube. See, if the heading is clinical anatomy of kidney, urinary bladder, uterine tube, vast difference, they will only ask clinical anatomy in the exam. They will not ask you gross anatomy. Okay. There are some odd things or there are some outliers, bouncers. Don't worry about that. They are very negligible, very rare. But if you learn kidney, only learn, try to learn clinical anatomy. If you are learning diaphragm, focus mainly on applied anatomy aspect. Gross anatomy, these are the topics which are given. Now let's try to understand difference between these terms. Though they look synonyms, they are not synonyms. There are subtle differences. So now, when I say gross anatomy, which is the commonly used term, okay, if you open BD Chaurasia or UPSC medical notes, most of the topics we cover gross anatomy. Gross anatomy is, you have to start with introduction, you have to mention where that organ is located, okay, which quadrant, like if you take liver, liver is mainly in the right upper quadrant, right? Similarly, you have to mention the weight if you know and very importantly the surfaces and borders anterior, posterior, inferior, anterior border, posterior border and also relations. What are all the organs which are related anteriorly, inferiorly, posteriorly. So these are the headings that you need to follow for grass anatomy. It's simple and easy. Coming back to applied and clinical anatomy. Yes, they are synonyms most of the times but there are subtle differences. Just look at the topics under which they are asked. Upper limb, applied anatomy, lower limb, applied anatomy joints applied anatomy diaphragm perineum and inguinal region when you observe these topics these topics perineum and inguinal region injuries are seen in sports medicine similarly the bones of the upper limb and abdomen fracture physiotherapy joints mainly orthopedic and physiotherapy that means we are applying anatomical knowledge not only for medical purpose but also other branches like sports medicine physiotherapy or for all these organs you might need to also design some devices, assistive devices or prosthesis. So the knowledge of anatomy we are applying not only from medical point of view, we are also taking into the various other fields apart from healthcare. Okay. So that is the actual meaning of applied anatomy. Mainly applied anatomical aspects comes under the sports medicine, physiotherapy or orthopedic orthopedic related topics in anatomy that's why if you open syllabus and see the applied anatomy is there for upper and lower limb applied anatomy is there for joints now applied anatomy is there for perineum and inguinal region diaphragm is an exception but again diaphragmatic breathing and all they might need just physiotherapy if there is problem with diaphragm or ventilation and all those are other aspects coming back to clinical anatomy clinical anatomy is purely for the doctor's sake Okay, it is integrated with clinical practice. If I know the anatomy of the kidney, it would be easy for me to understand the diseases associated with it. It also helps me in the treatment aspect. So kidney, urinary bladder, uterine tubes. Okay, if I know the clinical anatomy of uterine tube, I can use it for tubal ligation. Vas difference, I can use it for vasectomy, right? So ventricles of the brain, I can use it for actually uh, the drainage, lumbar puncture and all, right? So there are a lot of aspects which are related clinically for these particular topics. So these are the topics you have to list down kidney, urinal, bladder, uterine tube, vast difference, ventricles of brain. So we'll be looking at the clinical anatomy aspect of it. Now surgical anatomy is the new thing which is not mentioned in the syllabus but they're asking in the exam. So why they're asking surgical anatomy? If you take any topic like tongue, thyroid, 
mammary gland stomach uterus they are integrated with the other parts of the syllabus like oral cancer tumors of thyroid breast cancer stomach cancer and bleeding peptic ulcer and prolapse of the uterus these are there in the surgery so surgery when you open bailey and love okay if you see these topics at the introduction are the first page of these topics surgical anatomy is mentioned so for these integrated topics with general surgery you have to know the surgical anatomy that is tongue thyroid mammary gland stomach and if you know the lymphatic drainage of the mammary gland it helps in lymphatic resection right if you know the blood supply of the thyroid gland then you know way to ligate it to avoid injury to the blood vessels similarly the tongue the lymphatic drainage depending upon that you can go for cervical node dissection stomach and all you will know way to put grams or mental patch how to treat perforation all these things and uterus also very importantly the supports of the uterus if you know the supports of the uterus you can treat prolapse depending upon which supports are weak so this is surgical anatomy so that's why they might ask anything the answer is same but when you understand actual terminology it makes makes it easy like if they ask applied anatomy don't just mention clinical part also mention it is also used in sports medicine physiotherapy processes and all if they ask clinical anatomy stick to the clinicality like how it is useful for medical surgical anatomy focus mainly on the anatomy which is relevant to surgery like when they are doing surgery how they integrate it right so applied anatomy as i said physiotherapist clinical anatomy for mainly for medical doctors surgical anatomy for surgeons okay now what i did uh, with all the video courses of upsc medico for upsc civil services examination for each subject i took some time 10 15 minutes of time i have recorded a video so that you will be able to understand syllabus and you will be to able to know the focus areas on to which you have to focus for this particular exam so for all the subjects understanding syllabus and focus areas there so whenever you are started you're starting your preparation with upsc medico first finish up the first video so that will give you a lot of idea about how to go ahead with that particular subject okay so this understanding syllabus videos are there with all the subjects they are part of our upsc medico video course for upsc civil services examination medical sciences as an optional 